Welcome to Electro Online. Now that we know what flux is, we're ready to tackle the, the concept of what is self-induction. So imagine that we have a voltage source which changes with time. So we have a, an alternating voltage source which causes a changing current, an alternating current to the circuit. And let's say we have an inductor in the circuit. Now what's going to happen is as the current goes through the inductor will build up a magnetic field and as the current is changing the magnetic field which will change as well. There will be a changing magnetic field because of a changing current. Whenever we have a changing magnetic field that means we're going to have a changing flux through the loops of the inductor and that will induce a voltage and therefore the voltage that is induced is equal to the number of loops times the rate of change of the flux with respect to time. So a changing voltage causes a changing current which causes a changing magnetic field which causes a changing flux to the loops which then causes an induced voltage and that is equal to the number of loops times the rate of change of the flux with respect to time. So n is the number of loops and i is the magnetic flux through the coils of the inductor and the change in the flux is caused by the change in the current. So if we change this equation, we write d flux dt as d flux di times di dt, then we see here that the number of loops times the, times the change in the flux with respect to the current, that portion times di dt, which is the change in the current with respect to time, then can be written as follows. It can be written as l times di dt, which means that l which is the self-inductance, can be written as n times the change in the flux with respect to the changing current. Now we can also write L as mu sub naught n square a divided by L. Hmm, where did that come from? Well, mu sub naught is the permeability of free space, which is defined as 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 Weber per amp times meter, and we'll get into more detail of that later. L is the length of the coil, n is the number of loops, we have to square that, and a is the cross-sectional area of the loop. Now you'll see where that came from. We know that the B field, the magnetic field through a coil, is mu sub naught n times i times l. So we have a steady state current through the coil, then we take the, what we call the uh, permeability of free space, we multiply times the number of loops, we multiply times the current divided by the length of the, of the coil, and that gives us the B field. We can also write it as mu sub naught small n times i, where small n is the number of loops per unit length. Now we also know that the magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic, the strength of the magnetic field times the cross-sectional area, and we know that the strength of the magnetic field here can be defined as mu sub naught n times i divided by L, we multiply them times the area. Then we remember that the voltage is equal to n times the change in the flux with respect to the current times the change of current with respect to time or n times the change in the flux with respect to time which is what we're going to do here and notice that since the flux is equal to this then the ddt of the flux is going to be the ddt of this and the only thing that's changing would be the current so we write mu sub naught n times a divided by l times the IDT times n, and that's where the n square comes from. So you can see then that this quantity right here, mu sub naught n square a over l, is indeed the self-inductance times the IDT. And so with an inductor in a circuit, the voltage induced by the inductor is going to be equal to the self-inductance times the change in the current with respect to time, where the self-inductance can be expressed as mu sub naught n square a over l if we deal with the physical dimensions of the coil or we can talk about it in terms of the number of loops times the change in the flux with respect to the change in the current and that's how we define self-inductance.